Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. <laughs> It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King on New Husky. <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. The principle of the best education possible for our children has been one of the basic cornerstones of our nation. But the ever-increasing enrollment in elementary schools has resulted in poor educational conditions in many communities across the country. Most important, there is an insufficiency of elementary school teachers. Teaching is an occupation that is more attractive now than ever before, since there is a growing public interest in education and measures are being taken to improve schools. Such a career offers exceptional opportunities for intelligent, imaginative young men and women who are now in college. The lack of teachers is only one side of this problem. Some places require additional school buildings. Others need more equipment, textbooks, and personnel. If these problems are to be met and solved, the cooperation of every citizen is a must. See what you can do. Better schools build better communities. This message is brought to you as a public service. Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police was seated in the inspector's office in Dawson City. I know you just returned from patrol duty north of here, Sergeant, but I'm afraid you'll have to leave Dawson immediately on another assignment. Well, that's all right with me, sir. Where to? Whitehorse. You can take the last boat of the season as far as Selkirk, then make White Horse on horseback before the snow flies, I think. The boat leaves this afternoon, sir. I'll be on it. Good. The reason I want you to go down there, Sergeant, is because a man named Trigger Strong, who was awaiting trial in Skagway, broke jail and managed to escape across the border. I see. I received a telegram last night about him. An accomplice helped him to escape. Uh, Trigger is about 30, big man, black beard. Well, what makes you think he'll show up in White Horse, sir? Strong might double back across the border into the States. It seems Strong had a wife and small son. She left him a few years ago, took the boy and joined her father in Whitehorse. You see, he never knew where they had gone until after he was taken into custody. His wife's father's picture was in the papers after he made a strike. The article mentioned Traeger's wife and son. Was this information about Strong in that telegram you received last night, sir? Of course not. You see, I met the wife's father when he first came to the Yukon. He was here in Dawson for a short time. And then two weeks ago, Clem Harris, that's his name, came here in business. He told me all about Trigger and his own daughter, and about Trigger Strong's capture. Oh, so that's it, sir. I know Clem and his daughter. I'll do all I can to find the Strong, Inspector. I'll take King with me. Good. Between the two of you, I feel confident you'll bring in Strong if he's anywhere near Whitehorse. Goodbye and good luck, Sergeant. Thank you, sir. Meantime, on the trail through White Pass and their journey toward Whitehorse, Trigger Strong and his companion, Curly Thorn, discussed future plans as they rode. Curly was saying, Tell me, Trigger, what if we do locate that wife and kid of yours? What good will that do us? Since she ran out on you a few years ago, you don't expect her to hide us out, do you? Don't be a fool, Curly. That would be the first one to turn us in if she got the chance. For Pete's sake, why do you want to find her? Several reasons. She walked out on me. She left a note saying the kid had never known his old man was an outlaw. Well, now, since I learned her father struck it rich, that Ella and Bobby are with him, I figure on getting some of that cash through Ella. And to get back to her, I'm going to tell the kid that I'm his father. <laughs> she 
She won't like him to know that his old man's an outlaw and a killer. She sure won't like you telling the boy about it. Let's get moving, Trigger. Something's liable to be trailing us. Get out of there. Get up. When Trigger and Curly reached the vicinity of Whitehorse, they searched around until they found a deserted cabin on a side trail where they decided to set up quarters. Curly rode to town for supplies and to scout for news. When he returned, he brought some information. I asked around at the cafe, Trigger. Found out your wife's father, Clem Harris, still living in the cabin, has claim half a mile the other side of town, the North Trail. Good. And it isn't safe for you to be seen. Heard it rumored around town about your heading this way. Nobody knows you were the one who helped me escape, so you can get around without worrying. Meantime, I'll lay low. Late that afternoon, the first snow of the season was falling when Sergeant Preston arrived in Whitehorse. After going to the constable's office, Preston and the constable, taking the great dog Yukon King with them, rode out to Clem Harris' cabin. Well, well, Sergeant Preston, it's sure good to see you and King again. Come in, come in. Thanks, Clem. Of course, we all know the constable. He was out this way yesterday. Uh -huh. Say, uh, hello, Bobby. Here's Sergeant Preston and King. Well, it's been a long time since we've seen you, Sergeant. Yes, it has, Ella. Hello, Sergeant. Hi there, Keith. Hey, Bobby's going fast, getting to be quite a big boy. Oh, gosh, I'm nine years old now, Sergeant. <laughs> We're so glad to see Sergeant Preston and King. We haven't said hello to the constable, Bobby. <laughs> That's all right, Mrs. Strong. I was here yesterday, you know. Sergeant Preston and King haven't been here for a long time. That's right, Bobby. Oh, golly, Sergeant. You must have a new whistle. That's a gold-colored one. You're older with silver color. Yes, this is a new whistle. Sergeant Preston's being modest about that whistle. It's made of pure gold, Bobby. Pure gold? Oh. It's made of pure gold, huh? Well, that's sure something. Where'd you get a whistle like that? It was a gift, Clem. Headquarters yeah. gave permission for the sergeant to accept that whistle. Oh, what wonderful. Do you know? I value it very highly. Ella, to change the subject, we, uh... Came out here because of certain news we received at headquarters. I understand the constable has told you. Yes. Uh, Bobby, run along into the next room with King and play in there while we talk. All right, Mom. Come on, King. <laughs> I don't want Bobby to know anything about his father. He thinks his father's dead. I see. Of course, we're not certain Trigger will come here. But since he did cross the border heading in this direction... I'm not really worried, Sergeant. After all, it's been six years since I left him. Well, don't worry, Ella. We'll keep watch, and if he comes near White Horse, we'll do what we can to capture him. He has no reason to come here, Sergeant. He didn't care for either Bobby or me. Oh, I see. Well, we'll get back to town. Even if he does come to White Horse, we'll know about it before he can locate this cabin. We'll keep in touch with him. Let's go, Tom. Right, sir. It was a couple of hours after Sergeant Preston and the constable returned to town that Trigger and Curly rode through the falling snow along the North Trail after circumventing the town. There's a cabin just ahead, Trigger. Maybe that's Harris' place. Yeah, we'll make sure before we go in. Still don't figure how you intend to handle this deal. Gotta be careful. Don't worry, you just leave it to me, Curly. Here's the cabin. Oh, 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 it's oh. all hey. We'll look in the window first. Come on. Two men cautiously approached a window and looked in. They saw an old prospector sitting at a table upon which an oil lamp was burning brightly. It's not Harris. This is the wrong place. Huh? No sound. I was putting gold dust into a poke trick. Yeah. Yeah, he is. No use missing a chance like this. Come on. Howdy, strangers. What can I do for you? We're looking for somebody who lives out this way. Better let us step in out of the snow for a minute. Now, Come wait on a minute, minute Curly. Right. Uh, right, look here. You tell me whose cabin you're looking for. Sure, right? we're heading for the Harris cabin. Oh, it's just up the trail a short way. You can get there in five minutes. We'll be leaving in a minute. But I figure we might as well take along that poke of gold dust on the table. Now, Curly? <laughs> yeah, might as well. Now, hold on. I worked hard for that dust. I got it. Uh, so you're a couple of ordinary crooks, huh? Said you were looking for the Harris cabinet. Great day. I bet one of you is trigger strong. I heard the news about you being headed this way. You know too much, you old coot. When the Mounties hear about this... Well, they'll... you won't tell them. This will fix you. Oh! Man, all I have you sure socked him with that gun, boy. Yeah, you won't do any talking tonight. Now we'll head for Clem Harris's place. And give my loving wife a pleasant surprise. <laughs> Come on, Curly.
We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Kids, wouldn't you like to be in the ballpark and see how a star pitcher makes the ball curve right over home plate? Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Walk right through the gate free if you are 12 years or younger and have mom or pop with you or another paying adult. It's as easy to get a free baseball ticket as going to the grocery store. Get it right inside packages of Quaker Pop wheat and Quaker Pop rice and Muffet shredded wheat. You get two free tickets inside Quaker Paco 10. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Get a free baseball ticket package of Quaker Pop Wheat or Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. If your store doesn't have the special packages yet, send a box top from the regular package to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. <laughs> Now to continue. Leaving the prospector's cabin with a stolen poke of gold, Trigger and Curly rode to the Harris cabin. <laughs> Ella will get quite a shock when she sees me. Ooh, oh, oh, oh. Oh. Better have your gun handy, Curly. The old man's got a temper. All right. Well, what can I... Hey, what is this? Put down that shotgun. Now get out of the way. Ella, he's come. I tried to keep him out. Hello, Ella. You. Why did you come here? What do you want? <laughs> is that any way to welcome the loving husband that you haven't seen in six years, Ella? Trigger, please. If you have a spark of decency left in your heart, leave now before Bobby learns the truth about you. What do you mean, learns the truth? You know what I mean. He thinks his father is dead. It's far better than that. Oh, do you hear that, Curly? I'm dead. Ah, seems like they were figuring to hang a ghost back there in Skagway. <laughs> That's an odd one. No <laughs> use talking about him having any decency, Ella. Fact is, he was born with a heart of a killer. Ah, shut up. Where's that kid, Ella? I don't see him around. He went into his room a few minutes ago to play. Let him alone, Trigger. You'll spoil his whole life if you tell him who you really are. Army Rath, he's my boy as well as yours. I have a right to uh, know what... Take it easy, Trigger. Remember, he's just a kid... Your own attack. You keep out of this, Curly. Before I see the boy, I have some other business. With you, Harris. I don't deal with killers like you. Well, you will this time. I know your habits, but I know you got plenty of gold hid around here. Get it for us. Now she here. If it's you see either that or a bullet. I got nothing to lose by plugging one more, you know. Please, Dad, give him the gold and let him go, please. Hey, Cinderella, I'm not you going to get it and hurry it up. Get it, I said. Well, I making a hearty. You won't get far with it. You can bet on that. Mother's well, expected you'd show up around here. How could I ever have married a man like you? <laughs> Must have been my good looks. <laughs> well, there's a gold. A whole shack of it. You have what you came after. Now, please go. Let your old man head for town and put the money on the trail. I'm not that stupid. But what are you going to do? Well, my plan is very simple, Ella. We take the boy no. with us. Oh, no! Hey, Trigger, we don't want a kid along with us. Well, you won't get far with him. But I send it within an hour of the money. You won't say you. anything to anybody, either of you. Not if you want to see the boy again. Oh, no. No, of course we won't, Trigger. Whatever you say, we'll do. Just so you don't hurt Bobby. I mean, my own kid? Of course not. But unless you do exactly as I tell you, he stays with me from now on. And you'll never see him again. Uh, what? What is it you want us to do? Just stay here in this cabin and keep your mouth shut. If the constable or anybody else asks about Bobby, just say he's visiting. All right. You leave the boy in the deserted cabin just off the south trail, a couple of miles south of town. You can go out there in the morning and get him. But if you say anything before then or we're followed, you'll never see Bobby again. A short time after the two crooks had ridden away with Bobby, the prospector whom they had robbed regained consciousness. Though a bit weakened, he managed to saddle his horse and head for town. A short time later, he entered the constable's office. Uh, constable, they've been robbed. Yeah, I'll call in. What happened, man? Two crooks. One was a big man with a black beard. Came knocking at my cabin door, asking the way to Harris' place. I figured it was Trigger Strong and said so. They took my gold and socked me on the back of the head. Knocked me out for a while. You'd better see the doctor, Ned. 
Costa and I will hit the trail for Clem Harris' cabin right away. Let's get going. Come on, King. Oh, oh, oh. The two Mounties with Yukon King made a hurried trip to Clem Harris' cabin. Hold on, King. Hold on, Come along, King. Frank, the snow's covered any tracks the cooks might have left. I know. We won't all trigger came here until we talk to Clem and Ella. That's right. Oh, two seconds. The constable. Come in, come in. Thanks, Clem. Good evening, Sergeant. We didn't expect you back so soon. We had news about Trigger, Ella. Man answering his description, and another crook robbed old Ned down the trail earlier this evening. Oh, how terrible. We were worried about you folks, so we hurried right out here as soon as Ned told us. But uh, if it had been Trigger, it seems to me he'd have been here at your cabin some time ago. Well, Sergeant, as a matter of fact... Your dad's been walking around with his shotgun ready ever since we were here before. Oh, the King's scratching at Bobby's door. He wants Bobby to play with him again. Come away, King. Don't wake Bobby up. He isn't bad at me. Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. He was very tired. Maybe Trigger and his friend got cold feet after they robbed old Ned. Yes, could be. Frank, I suggest you stay here until I get back. I'll take King and go to Ned's cabin. We won't be gone long. All right, Sergeant. If... Hey, look. There goes King to Bobby's door again. He's trying to open the door. King! Oh, I'll get him. Wait, Sergeant. King, I... why didn't you come when I come? Oh. Bobby isn't here. His bed has been disturbed. Come on, fella. <laughs> Ella, you told me Bobby was sleeping. I, I forgot. I... He went visiting this evening. I... Oh, Dad, I... <laughs> uh, they know you aren't telling the truth, Ella. Well, it's easy to see what's happened. Speak up, Clem. Oh, no, no, Dad. No, we can't tell. We can't. I get it. Trigger did come here. <laughs> yes, yes, he did. Quickly he and briefly, Clem to told all about he Trigger's died. plans and where he had taken Bobby. Sergeant Preston listened attentively, and then he spoke. We'll have to move fast, Frank. Right. Come on, King. Oh, oh, oh. We'll get back as soon as we can, Ella. Steady, <laughs> fellow. Easy now. Get, get up, Clem. Get up. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. It's a home run! Hooray for our team! He smashed that ball right out of the ballpark. Say, are you fellas and girls getting in on the fun? Well, come on! Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Get your free baseball tickets right inside packages of Quaker Puffed Wheat, Quaker Puffed Rice, or Muffet Shredded Wheat. And two free tickets are inside Quaker Paco 10. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. If you are 12 years or younger, just bring mom or dad or another paying adult and see major or minor league baseball games free. So rush to the grocery store. Get free baseball ticket packages of Quaker puffed wheat or rice, Muffet shredded wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. If your store doesn't have the special packages yet, send a box top from the regular package to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Go to the ball game free. See home run hitters in person. Now to continue. When Trigger and Curly arrived at the deserted cabin on the other side of town, they left their horses standing outside and took Bobby in. Golly, I don't like this cabin much. Is that a fire in the stove, Curly? The kid's cold. All right. I'll take off. Sit down, kid. All right. You don't have much furniture, do you? No. I don't expect to be here long. Gosh, you're big and strong. My father was big and strong like you. Is that a fact? Yep. Mom told me so. He was a lawman before he went to heaven. And did that. Did your ma tell you that, too? Uh Uh-huh. Well, what do you know? Shut up, Curly. Just turn to that fire, do you savvy? Sure, sure. Were, were you my father's friend, mister? You were better than anybody else, son. Oh, gosh, did you? And were you a lawman, too? Oh, I... I been mixed up with the law in a way you might say. Say, you know, I liked you because my dad liked you. Anybody he liked was all right, I bet. Oh, so you... You figured you liked me, huh? Uh-huh. Well, I don't want people to like me, son. They don't get you any place. You're only fool, and I can tell. 
Everybody wants folks to like them. That is, except outlaws. Hey, Trigger, I thought you were going to tell the kid... Told you to keep your mouth shut. I'll tell the kid what I please. Yeah, it's your own way. Yeah, now the fire's going. It's about Never time Never mind that. Just sit down and take it easy. we got plenty of time. <laughs> All right. Hey, kid. Suppose your old man, I, I mean your pa, had been an outlaw. What then? Not only bad men are outlaws, mister. My dad could never be one, even if he was alive. Oh, sure, sure, I know, but uh, just suppose. Well, I, I guess I wouldn't want to be alive. But that's a funny thing to suppose, because I know my dad was a lawman, even a sheriff, I bet. You tell me all about him, will you, please, mister? Well, I... <clears throat> Just as you say, Bobby. When he was younger, that's just what your pa wanted to be. A sheriff. Why, well, remember when you were born. By thunder, he was the proudest man that ever lived. Listening to Bobby I'll and seeing the look on his face when he talked of his father brought a gradual change over the face of Trigger. He started telling Bobby what his father was like in his younger days, building himself up in the youngster's estimation. I don't know. An hour passed before he realized it. And then he Did broke off suddenly to speak to Curly. Holy smoke, Curly, what time is it? Uh, time? Oh, yeah. Hey, we've been here half an hour already. Uh, well, Bobby, it's time for you to turn in and get some sleep. Look, we aren't here when you wake up, Lanny. Just wait, you understand that? Yes, sir. Curly, the snow must be piling up in our saddles out there. Go put the horses in the lean to till we're ready for them. All right. Trigger put Bobby on a cot along the wall of the cabin and then watched as the boy's eyes closed drowsily. Meantime, Sergeant Preston and a constable saw the light in the deserted cabin, stopped behind some boulders a short distance away. Oh, buggy. Oh, buggy. Oh, buggy. From here we can see the back of the cabin, Frank. You and King stay here. I'll go and make sure they're inside. All right. If they are, I'll give two blasts on my whistle and burst in through the front door. You and King come on the double and cover the back. Right. Stay here, King. <laughs> Preston moved with ready gun through the falling snow to the front of the cabin. He saw Trigger and Bobby through the front window. Then, moving to the door, he was about to give the signal when... Reach, Mommy. Don't make any noise. All right. Drop the gun. Yeah, I'll open the door and go in. I got your gun. Now look who I found outside, Trigger. Mounty, huh? Was he alone? Yeah. Looked all around. Didn't see anyone else. Spotted him when I came around from the lean-to. Keep your voice down. The kid's asleep. You sunk mighty low to pull that boy into this. Maybe. Curly will tie and gag this, Mounty. This means we take the boy with us. Grab his arm. All right. Uh, now I got him. Hey, what dropped on the floor? I don't know. Something bounced over near the cot. Forget it and tie him up tight. Here's some cord. Yeah, this will hold him. One sound out of you, Mounty, and you'll be sorry. Hurry up, Curly, and then gag him. During the struggle, Bobby opened his eyes. He recognized Sergeant Preston at once. For a moment he stared, then was about to speak when Preston caught his eye and shook his head as a signal for silence. <laughs> then Preston spoke just as Curly reached for a handkerchief to gag him. That was my whistle that rolled over near the cot. If I'd had a chance to blow that twice, I'd have had help by now. Ah, so you got someone waiting outside, huh? Yeah, they're nowhere near the cabin, Trigger. I saw him walk from some boulders off to one side. Came around to the off side of the cabin and grabbed him. We can get away out front, all right. And now for the gag. Bobby looked over the edge of the cot and saw the gold whistle. Still unobserved by the outlaws, the boy reached out and picked it up. And then suddenly he blew it twice. Hey! What the... The kid, he blew the whistle. And a little where Get away from him! No. Hey, what's the idea? Kid blew that whistle and... Never mind that. Have your gun ready. We're going out of here. Another Mario! No, no, no! As Curly aimed at the constable, Bobby jumped from the cot and ran forward, grabbing the outlaw's legs and spoiling his aim and knocking him against Trigger. Good boy, Bobby. I'll tell him. No. Oh. How do you ask for this? Trigger didn't oh. see the great dog king. He oh. sprang forward suddenly. Oh, my arm. Get him off the dog. Oh. 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 Watch him, boy. How did you signal when you were tied up like that, Sergeant? I didn't. Bobby blew the whistle. Oh. Untie me and we'll go back to Harris Cabin and leave Bobby. Right. Then we'll get these two to town. Later, the two Mounties arrived at the Harris place with Bobby and the two outlaws. As they stood in a group, Ella exclaimed, oh, Thank heaven you're safe. Bobby, what did he tell you about your father? Lots of things. Good things, Mom. What? He said he was a friend of Dad's. But, oh, but I guess he must have been one of the outlaws Dad used to chase. He was so nice to me, I, I didn't think even for a minute he was an outlaw. 
I see. Well, come, Bobby. You must go into your room to bed now. So long, son. Sorry you uh, found out I'm not as good as... as you say your dad was. Goodbye, Mr. Trigger. Hmm. Uh, bust my suspenders. If there isn't a soft spot even in the heart of a killer. He didn't tell Bobby. Oh, shut up. Can't a guy give his own kid a break? Trigger, you might have been a different man if you could have looked a hand. Bobby's a fine boy and a smart one, too. He's a youngster you can well be proud of. He caught on quickly what to do with that gold whistle. Well, let's get these two cooks back to jail, Frank. This case is closed. <laughs> We'll return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. The Adventures of Rin Tin Tin, presented on Mutual every Sunday over most of these stations, is a listening treat especially designed for the whole family. Several generations have thrilled to the heroic exploits of Rin Tin Tin, the dog that's almost human. And now you can hear his further adventures every Sunday. The new series of Rinty's Adventures are laid in the colorful and legend-filled era of the Pioneer West. His young master is Corporal Rusty, stationed at Fort Apache. During the troublesome post-Civil War era, the Army Cavalry finds plenty of action in keeping under control the renegade Indians who set fire to the early settlers' cabins. And as members of the Fort Apache Cavalry Unit, Corporal Rusty and Rin Tin Tin are engaged in many stirring escapades. Make sure your family enjoys the pleasurable listening on The Adventures of Rin Tin Tin. Presented by Mutual every Sunday over most of these stations. In the back room of the Klondike Tavern, Joe Gans, the owner, is talking to a young man who calls himself Steve Baker. All right, Baker. You want to join my gang? I give you a chance to prove yourself. What do you want me to do? Sergeant Preston just arrived in Gold Center, looking for you and Stag Lisbon. He's planning to stick around. Unless we get rid of him, he's apt to gun things up for us when we pull off that holdup. So? I want you to kill Preston. Tonight. Yes, there's danger ahead for Sergeant Preston when he sets out to bring a gang of killers to justice. Unless he moves cautiously, he may find himself their next victim. Don't miss this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America. <laughs> <laughs>